Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessAtrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is safe, alive, healthy. That's a good, right? That's where we want to start. The trading aspect, uh, again, is only a cherry on top. So let's get into it. So last week, again, uh, last week, very, very ugly uh, stats all across the board. You had all the indexes uh, giving up 10, 11, 12% worth of losses pretty big steep again if you kind of go back to last week's video if you didn't watch any videos in between from last sunday to all the way through the week you you kind of you know you had to kind of understand that from my from my point of view okay i i, I did think we were going to have a thousand point rally uh based on um well just all my experiences what i've seen in the worst markets i've traded again uh, you go back to uh, 9 11 you go back to the mortgage crisis uh, and all that good stuff and, and, and you always see uh, if you always traded those markets you kind of know the similarities no matter how bad a market is or was or was uh, you're always gonna have that big aggressive sweep back to the upside doesn't mean that's necessarily the bottom just kind of a knee-jerk reaction because again stocks just don't go straight down stocks go don't go straight up um, and, and we got that right we, we got that um, Monday you know we got that last Monday and you know the Bulls squeezed up i think it was like 11 1200 points whatever the case may be so not only did they do that once uh but they did that twice right they did that twice throughout the week but on the flip side you saw some really aggressive uh losses as well okay and if you look at all the the market threw at us uh over the course of this week it, it's pretty pretty amazing how much data and how much macro headlines uh we had in front of us this week you had uh, now over a hundred thousand cases, right, globally, uh, of the coronavirus. Okay, you had a surprise uh, Federal Reserve uh, rate cut fifty basis points on Tuesday. Okay, so obviously a big, big thing. And the initial response was market rally, right? Markets exploding, markets rally. Fed, Fed just cut rates, and then people just realized, well, wait a minute, they're cutting rates because of what is happening, right? They're cutting rates of because what is potentially going to happen of the ramifications if there is a major, major global pan pandemic uh, of this coronavirus. And all of a sudden the market went from up 300 to the Dow to down uh, 700 very, very quickly. So we had that. You had Super Tuesday, right? You had Joe Biden, Joe Biden uh, winning uh, many of the primaries, did very, very well. The next day the market rallies uh, and in the process knocks out Mike Bloomberg, uh, knocks out Elizabeth Warren, Super Tuesday, right? So you had that on you. You had the oil plunging 10% for the week. Big, okay, big, big move. 10% plunge throughout the week. You have all these different cases popping up. Now, what we talked about last week, now we're starting to see into fruition. You have all these major metropolitan cities, New York, New Jersey, New Jersey, New York, uh, LA. You're starting to get big Case, well, not big, but you're starting to get a good amount of cases that people are starting to worry, right? Starting to worry. If you've gone to the, any supermarket or any anything, Costco's in the last two weeks, you see there's a run on uh, sanitized products, uh, you know, on everything. So people are starting to get very, very concerned, right? People are getting concerned. And it's not that, and, and you see this all the time, that people are comparing, well, there's hundreds of thousands of deaths because of the flu, there's only like X amount of deaths uh, on this coronavirus. It's not, it, it's, it's comparing apples to oranges. We, we know, we already know what the flu is, right? We know what it is. The difference why the flu is obviously a bigger deal now, but the, the, the difference is nobody knows what this thing actually can be. I think that's the, the it's again, you, you know, you know, you know, the less of the two evils, even though it's much more aggressive and it kills more people. We just don't know what this thing is. So when you compare, for example, SARS and bird flu and mad cow uh, versus this. Yeah. You know, it was new back then. Right. And Zika, it was new back then and it took some time to kind of figure out how to combat it. We're still in that infancy stages trying to figure out what works, what doesn't. And this is why it's scary. So that's why a lot of people 
are canceling their vacations. I had a, I had a trip planned to uh, Palm Beach on the 11th, right? In a couple of days, I was supposed to leave on, uh, what was it, uh, on the 11th, okay? My trip got canceled. Now we're debating uh, canceling our trips to the Bahamas in April. Okay, we'll see. I'm hoping they kind of die down, but yeah, I'd like, a, I'd like a little bit of vacation here. I need, you know, I need a little bit of a break as well, but again, I'm not gonna jeopardize my life. So you, you're seeing the travel industry, right? The travel industry just really come to a standstill. Matter of fact, you had the federal, you had the government come out on Friday and say, well, you know, you guys should really stay away from the cruise ships, right? Just don't go on cruises. I mean, are you guys short RCL and CCL? I mean, again, statements like that are scary, not because, again, how many cases have died is how many cases potentially can die. Again, it's the fear uh, of the unknown. So you had all this stuff going on and you had the biggest, right? You had the biggest percentage swing in the S&P 500, okay, since October of 1987. For all you guys who weren't live in 1987 or don't know what that is, oh, by the way, that was Black Friday, right? That was Black Friday, the market crashed. Um, so we had a crazy week, and at the end of the day, right, at the end of the day, if, if I would never have guessed it. When I looked at it this morning, I was in shock. The Dow Jones was actually up a little less than 2% for the week, right? NASDAQ was flat. Um, S&P was, uh, was up six tenths of a percent. And again, this is a perfect example why we've been saying for years that the indexes don't matter. What does matter from the trading point of view, and this is kind of where we always talk from the trader's point of view. Again, the numbers, the headlines, they're all fancy and they're all great and they're great water cooler talk and it's, it's an, a phenomenal conversation piece and for the media to get you scared and all that good stuff, right? Is your money is safe, if your life's safe, all that great stuff. We're speaking, this forum is here to speak from the trader's point of view and when we go from it. And again, when I went through 9-11, right? When I went through 9-11 from 2000 to 2000, 2001 to 2003, again, I didn't make a single cent because again, it was all new, right? It was all new. Again, dealing with a terrorist market was new. Not many of us dealt with that, okay? So I didn't know what to do, okay? And when it got to the mortgage mess, okay, you know, five, six, seven years later, the first half of the mortgage mess around 2007, I, you know, I, I couldn't get any really good sustainability, right? This consistency was tough because again, when was the last time we saw a financial market pretty much about to implode and, every, and all hell, every, everybody's gonna go hell in a handbasket. So I wasn't prepared for that. By the time 2008 rolled around, right? I was better. I kind of figured things out a little bit along the way. So by the time we got to this pandemic, I'm a much better trader because I'm, I've already gone through the turmoil. If you're a brand new trader and this is your first two years and all you've seen for the last two years is some random egg on Avatar, you know, Avatar on Twitter talking about buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. Well, if you bought the dip, you're not trading anymore. So again, I think a lot of new traders have figured out what I've been saying for many, many years. There's a huge difference between buying the dip, okay, or buying stocks into rising 60 minute support in a bull market, right? One of them will make you money. The other one will put you on tilt. If you still haven't figured out which one is which, okay, you will figure it out eventually the hard way. But again, that is the biggest difference. So along these lines, just from, from 2001 to kind of where I am now, you know, present day, I've kind of figured slowly things out and not because I'm smarter than everybody else is I've went through it. Okay, I went through it. And the more times, and this is kind of, kind of a life lesson to all you new traders, when you're in your first two years and all you see is this rabid bull market, no matter what you buy, and if you hold it long enough, the market will make you right, the market will make you smart. So eventually when you have gravity kicking, and again, gravity kicked in and the corona headlines really was the catalyst behind it, now you have to figure things out, okay? And again, you're not expected to, 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 to figure things out, okay? You've, you've never gone through this, so how can you have the answers? The only people that have the answers are people who've traded through these, these markets. And now that we are in knee deep, right? Knee deep into this coronavirus, you know, I figured a few things out. I actually picked up a toy along the way but I kind of figured things out because of my previous experiences with dealing with horrific markets. And the one thing I, I will share, especially for new traders, in a bearish sentiment, again, I don't want to use the word bear market, okay? Because again, um, it, it, it's all, beauty's all in the eye of the beholder. It's all basically on your, your trading process, what you can consider bull or bear. So if you're a, for example, if you are a macro short seller, you'll always find, you know, you see a lot of really good uh, short sellers on social media. You know, their, you know, their bear market is all year round. So it doesn't make a difference for them if the market goes up, the market goes down. That's their niche. 
So I don't want to use the word bear market, but when you're in a bear sentiment, okay, you have to kind of figure things out. And, you know, I've been tweeting this for, you know, for a very, very long period of time. And, you know, you get a handful of people always asking, well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? And, and you know, I'm, I'm going to explain in a second. In a bearish sentiment, okay, always remember, always, always remember, okay, when there is a gap down, and this is something, you know, especially you newer traders can use uh, every single day, okay, when you have a gap down, and I actually tweeted this on Friday, uh, when you get a macro big gap down, 400, 500, 800 points, always remember, 90% of the stocks, okay, have made their average true range pre-market, okay? So if you see, for example, Amazon down $78 pre-market, again, think about where the value is, okay? You're not gonna, how, how many of you guys at home, you know, come Monday morning, let's just pretend that Dow's down 900 points. How many of you guys are gonna run out and start shorting Amazon down 90 points, right? Me either. So my point is when you get a big bearish gap down, very, very aggressive back down, 500 points or, or more, Right, 90% of the companies already made their move pre-market on the average true range. So the value, right, the value of the day is always to the upside because again, stocks don't go straight down and stocks don't go straight up. Again, that's just it's just the reality of trading. And as long as you're as long as you're patient to wait for channels to confirm back to the upside, you're always going to have an, an aggressive rally, the value in the most ugliest bear scenarios that you're possibly gonna find. So if you go through the whole week, and if you've been watching this video throughout the whole week, it's the same thing. The market gaps down, the value's to the upside. The market gaps up, and this is where, again, you just have to be smart. It's very rare anymore, okay, in any bearish scenario, that you're gonna have a gap and go. Very rare, because several things are on the table. Number one, okay, you're in a bear market, or in a bear, uh, bear sell scenario. Number two, the macro headlines that have gotten the market lower in the first place, they're still on the table, and you're only one headline away from seeing the lows of the day. Um, and three, nobody, okay, no experienced trader, no veteran trader will ever buy a gap and go in a bear scenario. It's just reality. And oh, by the way, if you trade channels, and again, that's my whole game, if you trade channels, if you have a nasty reversal to the downside, and the next day the market gaps up, all these stocks are doing is they're gapping up right into daily supply. And if you watched any of the workshops, have been in the live webinar, or just heard me speak just over the last eight, nine years that we've been trading these pivots, you know that supply zones, right? They're emotional buyers meeting technical sellers and demand zones on the way down, they're technical buyers meeting emotional sellers. So when you have a, a really 900,000 point decline the previous day, and then we gap up two, 300 points, you're gapping up into supply. And I, I, I guarantee it, okay, I give you my word. I, I give, you don't even believe me. I give you my word. If you buy a gap up the, the, the next day after a 900,000 point decline, you will lose money because you're buying the stock into supply, okay? So remember, of course, stocks can go higher after that, but now you need another candle or so to confirm that initial gap up into supply. Remember, stocks are trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, so that initial stuff on supply needs to get confirmed. And this is where, unfortunately, a lot of traders will look at the pre-market high list and go, well, I'm gonna buy that stock opening range high. And you don't realize that you're buying it right into supply. You are the emotional buyer meeting the technical seller. And when the market reverses, again, you get cream. You get absolutely cream. So if you've been watching kind of um, if you've been even watching my Twitter feed just for the last, you know, for the last two weeks, all you hear me saying on every gap down is, well, the initial values to the upside. And again, we're seeing pretty aggressive rallies intraday, right? Intraday rallies on all these stocks, no matter how bad they are. Netflix, Tesla, the casinos, uh, the airlines, right? Like, like on Friday, for example, we saw a really good, nasty reversal uh, in, in everything, right? You saw in the cruise ships, right? You saw in... Um, in hotels, for example, we put uh, MGM Grand on the Twitter feed and say, hey, red to green, uh, watch this thing go as well. So you have to make, you know, you have to make adjustments. And again, unfortunately, most traders, right, when, you, when you're learn, learning how to trade, you're trading off of daily candle, right? You're trading off daily charts. So basically somebody can say and say, well, I like to buy breakouts. And that's kind of where the joke has been over the last several years. Any single time we get a, any sustainable downside pressure, I always, I always, you know, make the joke of that one trader years ago, and I said, well, he says, Dan, I only like to buy breakouts. I, I don't like to short stocks. So I turned to him and I said, well, what do you do when the market goes down? And he goes, what do you mean? 
right? It's that guy. And a lot of you guys, unfortunately, have become sub subconsciously that guy or that girl because you've all you've experienced is a breakout rabid bull market. And this is where gravity kicks in. So if you've never traded through 9-11, if you've never traded through the mortgage mess, congratulations, you are trading your first uh, your first rabid bearish headline driven market. And it is called the coronavirus. But again, it doesn't seem now, right? It doesn't feel like it's now, but this is the best thing. I give you my word. This is the absolute best thing that could possibly happen to you for long term uh, into your into your trader development. Again, it's all great. Sunshines, rainbows and lollipops when the market's going straight up and you could buy whatever you want and you can chase whatever you want. That's all great. And you might make money or you might not. But you need this, right? You need a market to test your will, to test your patience, to test your confidence, uh, to test your character, to test your resilience, okay? Uh, it's not about getting punched in the face. You can get punched in the face a hundred times. It's how you react, what you do after, right? What do you do after you get punched in the face? And this is the whole point of I've gotten punched in the face uh, during 9-11. I've gotten kicked in the face. Uh, and kicked in the mouth and kicked in the ribs during the financial mess. Now I know how to duck, right? Now I know how to duck and kind of, you know, and kind of adapt to what I'm seeing. And, you know, for me, the safest thing, I'm always looking for the safest way to trade. And for me, the safest way to trade right now is with these channels, right? You, you know, gap down, wait for a confirmation to the upside. And if we get a gap up, waiting for confirmation to the downside, that's all I've been doing this week. And it's been a really good, solid week but not the conventional way that we're looking for. You're not getting five, 10 pivots a day. We did on, uh, I think it was on Wednesday or Thursday, really, really aggressive uh, day. Uh, not only to, it was, it was the day that we had that, that big rally off of Biden. So it was, I think, Wednesday, right? Wednesday, we had that really, really big rally. We had some really great pivots to the downside, really great pivots to the upside. But I, I picked up a new toy, okay? I picked up a new toy this week, and this is something that um, I started using sporadically about a week ago, and I noticed myself trading it more and more, waiting for channels to develop. And this is, you know, and this is uh, kind of going back to like my roots when I used to swing trade these small cap stocks. I started, I started remount bouncing on the 60 minute channels, small cap stocks this week. So what, what basically means is whatever stock you see in the morning on the pre-market high list, right? One of these stocks that are up 70%, 100%, right? I'm not chasing them, right? So the new trader, for example, would chase them and try to make, you know, five cents on them or 10 cents, whatever the case may be. I'm waiting for these things to come back down to the 60 minute channel. And once they hit the 60 minute channel, right? And they don't go down, I get long, use the, the candle low as my stop, right? Candle my stop and wait for that bounce back. And that thing worked over and over again. If you see me uh, tweet these things out throughout the whole week, man, you're getting some amazing bounces. I mean, really, really amazing bounces that uh, usually I would never even look at, but this is something I, I started focusing on a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've been trying to trade one or two of these things a day. I think I traded two of these things on Friday. Uh, I forgot what to say. Oh, one, uh, twice I traded ENZ, right? Just to give you an example. I traded ENZ on this bounce twice. Just to give you an example, I traded it right here. Okay. I traded it right here on a bounce. And then I traded it right here on the remount, right here on the bounce. So I think, you know, I, I think it gave me like f about 40, 45 cents in two trades, which was great, which was absolutely great. So I, I kind of want to keep on doing that until we get that natural, big, aggressive confirmation channel market back. Um, so you have to adapt, right? Again, for all you, you guys who do trade these small cap stocks, just remember, they're not going to go straight up. Even I and O, and I and O was it was really really funny on Friday. We were trying to dip this thing four separate times, and it never it never got to the sixty minute support. So if you notice, you see this guys, everybody see this orange line. This is what I mean about the sixty minute support. So any single time it gets to this sixty minute area, that's where I'm trying to you know trying to bounce these small cap stocks, right? Every single time it bounces, 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 bounces bounces, bounces. And when it remounts, it bounces again. So it's something that I kind of picked up. Uh, I've been using this remount strategy for the beta names for a very, very long time. And again, it, you know, you have to go, you kind of have to go where, where, um, uh, where the money flow is, where your safety money flow is. And again, it's all about 
adapting. It's all about you know continuing uh, to learn, and it's all about having an open mind to trade other things. Because again, if you had this conversation with me three weeks ago, I would say, ah, small caps, ha ha ha, right? Small caps, ah, who cares about small caps? I'm just trading beta. Now I'm trading beta, and I'm having pockets of interest on small caps as well. So uh, going into this week, uh, going into this week, it's hard to say I'm bullish or bearish. Uh, again, every every day, you know, every single day that I traded this week, the next day I said, well, you, know, you got to keep an open mind. The only thing that we do know, okay, uh, is a macro area of the queues. That's the macro area we, we, we do know. We know the upside, the queues need to reclaim uh, 221 on a closing basis. And to the downside, we know if the queues start losing 198, yeah, if you thought the selling was aggressive before, if you look at the weekly chart, right, if they start losing 198, look how much room we have down, right? We have room all the way down to like 184. So again, we know our macro areas of interest. You have 198 to the downside. We have 201 to the, to the upside and everything else in between. Again, stick to the plan. You don't need to trade every single day. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to put your feet into the fire. The market is not there uh, to entitle you to, to you know, to, to, to earn or anything in between. It's there to really separate you from your money. So why not make it your interest as a responsible trading adult, okay, whether you're trading for 20 years or 20 weeks or 20 months, okay, and trade when you feel comfortable. Not when I'm comfortable, okay, I'm comfortable. I'm doing this for nearly 21 years now. It's all about your individual comfortability. Know the market will still be there tomorrow and the next day and the next day in 200 days and 200 years after all, long gone. Most important thing is what we want to kind of start concentrating on is the amount of headlines, the new headlines that come out and we want to now start to concentrate on how the market reacts to these headlines. So eventually, just like anything else, the market will eventually go numb to this. Okay, just the way it did with Zika, with SARS, with uh, what was it, um, mad cow disease, bird flu, and everything in between. Again, is that day tomorrow? Is that day a year from now? We don't know, but we have to start paying attention to that day that eventually the market starts slowing down in these headlines, the ranges start to contract, which is a good thing. Usually range contraction is a bad thing. We want that, okay? We want market structure to be there, okay? We don't care about, uh, you know, we don't care about volatility. Again, I've said this all the time. A lot of new traders, they get confused between range expansion and volatility, right? I trade range expansion. What you're getting now is ridiculous volatility. Be careful what you get for. Be careful what you ask for. Um, so going into this week, again, we're looking for bounce plays, remounts. Uh, we are looking for macro areas of breakdowns uh, on the 60 minute channels on all beta. Obviously, if you look at all beta charts right now, you can see, you know, you can see the same thing macro wise. They're right in between. And a lot of you guys, again, like I mentioned it earlier, a lot of you guys, all you do is trade from daily charts. So if, if you only trade from daily charts, what are you doing in this market? Like, what are you possibly doing in this market that's giving you an edge? Every single chart is compromised. Every single one. You can't short the market if you're trading off daily charts because, again, stocks are down 12 days in a row. You can't buy the market because, well, your charts are not setting up the long side. The only thing that is truly giving you an edge right now is trading channels. That's exactly what I try to do every single day because, again, we know the landscape. We know the sentiment. We know the catalyst. We know the dangers. Now we're just looking to take advantage of all this information in between channels, in uh, top of the channel, bottom of the channel, look for reversal days, whatever the case may be, thinking, right? Thinking like responsible adults. So let me give you guys some ideas. Um, let me give you guys some ideas going into the new week. Uh, if you do, if you are planning to uh, join us uh, this week in the live webinar, uh, please get there at 9 a.m. You can't, you can't show up uh, two minutes into the open and say, what are we doing? First of all, it's, it's a ridiculous thing to do. Um, and the most important point is you have to understand why these pivots work, right? You have to understand the moving parts. Again, I could feed you pivots till you're blue in the face, till you, you know, to, till, 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 till the next of time. But if you don't understand the moving parts, what's the point? You're wasting your time, okay? You're cheating your development. So please get there uh, 9 a.m. Um, tomorrow morning. So let me give you guys some ideas uh, that I do like that is not uh, beta related. Um, I kind of like this Uma, Uma Thurman, right? Uma Thurman. This Uma had a big breakout. 
Okay, I wasn't, you know, you know, again, if you trade off daily charts, this is a pretty damn good breakout. So something like this you want to watch uh, either for any type of weakness Monday morning into, again, rising 60 minute support. If it holds that, you want to go long. Or if it starts remounting Friday's highs of 1540, 1550, keep an eye on that. Uh, SDGR has been, you know, it's been a pretty aggressive high flyer. Uh, it's, if, you, if you notice, it's been rejected here several times off this 10 day supply. If it starts remounting and reclaiming and building, right, off this 44 level, you could get a move to 48, right? It keeps on getting rejected uh, off this 44 level. So if it starts remounting, uh, definitely keep an eye on that. Um, I, I know, I mean, again, you couldn't get a dip on Friday to save your life. You really couldn't. It's the most amazing thing. Um, and the stock has gotten a monster run, okay? And I, I know a lot of people turn around and say, well, the stock is way overbought. Guys, remember, there's no such thing as overbought. Okay, no such thing. Okay, the, the Friday's closing price is fair value. It is. Okay, it's the last price that somebody's willing to pay for the stock. Uh, again, can this stock have a back test at some point? Maybe tomorrow, maybe Tuesday? Absolutely. Again, when a stock goes from 4 to 16, 100%. Of course, I'm not naive. But, but again, if it keeps on dipping, and this is where kind of the value play for tomorrow on this thing is, if this thing starts dipping into a rising 60-minute support, right? If you see it here, if you see exactly what I'm talking about here, right? All these channels are areas where it should bounce. So if it keep, continues to do so, it keeps on holding those levels, it continues to be bounce plays long. Uh, it really, for the macro point of view, you know, you probably want to see it one more day to kind of consolidate. But... You know, that 16 level, if it, if it starts rebuilding again, uh, that's probably going to have the next leg up. So keep an eye on that. Uh, another one, another one of these, um, you know, another one of these, um, you know, Corona plays is this VIR. Very, very thin name. But if this thing starts, re, you know, reclaiming, you know, 47, 50, 48, man, this thing has, you know, $8 of room. And the way this thing trades, you know, it's again, trades thinner. But boy, oh boy, it does have $8 of range. So keep an eye on that. Uh, and the last one, keep an eye on this CVM. Again, I'm trying to give you guys a bunch of non-beta names. You know, keep an eye on this thing. You know, this band here is going to be below 14. So if it can start remounting that 14, you never know, it could wake up as well. So again, guys, it's all about experience. It's all about patience. Uh, again, stay safe. Wash your hands. Just be smart. Again, we're in a very uncertain time, not only for the stock market, but we're in a very uncertain time. Uh, in the period of, you know, our health. So it's very, very important uh, to take care of your health, take care of your loved ones, take necessary precautions. Guys, God bless. If you're trading with us this week, we'll see you in the live webinar. If not, I'll see you on the field. Guys, God bless. Have a great, great Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.